the real news, I'm Aaron Maté. Tens of thousands are protesting across Catalonia today following the Spanish crackdown on its referendum. Spanish forces injured hundreds who took part in Catalonia's vote for independence, which authorities say received over 90% support. Today in Barcelona, a massive crowd marched on the Spanish National Police Regional Headquarters. The Spanish government says the referendum was illegal, and their standoff with Catalan leaders is said to be Spain's worst constitutional crisis since the country became a democracy four decades ago. Sebastian Faber is a professor of Hispanic Studies at Oberlin College, author of the forthcoming book, Memory Battles of the Spanish Civil War. Professor Faber, welcome. Help us understand what's going on right now. Well, sir, today is, has been a, there's been a general strike all over, declared all over Catalonia with uh, a high percentage of following, um, barely any public transportation ran, uh, roads were blocked, freeways were blocked, and the streets of the cities, especially Barcelona, filled with people either marching in silence or singing songs and kind of performing what has been so far uh, the collective attitude of the Catalans as they are fighting for their right to self-determination. And that performance has been a performance of peaceful protest, civilized dialogue, um, a democratic, uh, the, the, the performance of democratic aspirations, really. The response from the central Spanish state uh, has been for the past number of years, but especially in the last weeks and especially last Sunday, has been harsh and inflexible and repressive. On Sunday, we all saw how people trying to vote were met with um, visored riot police with the billy clubs, nightsticks, hitting uh, old people, young people, anybody who tried to express the democratic right to vote. The defense that the Spanish state has given of its of its uh, crackdown on, on what, what the Catalanes are trying to do has been that it's merely following the law. The Constitution of 1978 in Spain does not um, allow for referendums on self-determination. It declares that Spain as a nation is indivisible. And it limits the recognition of Spain's multinational makeup really to the creation of 17 autonomous regions. Um, Catalonia has tried to redefine its statute of autonomy uh, but in 2010, that redefined statute was um, um, declared uh, null and void by the country's constitutional court, by Spain's constitutional court. And ever since then, so for the past seven years, uh, the push for self-determination and the push for independence has been stronger and stronger. And everything indicates that the state's response, the, the, the harsh response from the Spanish state, has only managed to increase the feeling that lives under, among uh, many people in Catalonia, which is that uh, they don't fit, they don't belong to Spain, Spain doesn't want them. And just an hour ago, the Spanish king came uh, extraordinarily on television uh, in a six or seven minute speech to um, declare his position. Some people hoped that he would sound a more uh, conciliatory tone, a more sympathetic tone, um, perhaps that he would mention uh, that the, violent, the police violence of last Sunday was regrettable, but none of that happened. He did not mention the violence. He didn't even use the word dialogue at all. He talked about Concordia and he talked about um, Catalonia being a part of Spain, but he also in very harsh terms condemned the politicians in Catalonia who have been um, organizing the referendum and pushing for independence, he told, he said they were breaking Spain apart and they were breaking the law. It sounded to me like the king was preparing the ground for an even heavier um, intervention from the Spanish state, which could, could easily take the shape of, a, of a revoking Catalonia's aut autonomy. Hmm. What do you think was behind the decision to crack down so harshly on Sunday's vote? Like, what was the calculation there? Honestly, it's really hard to say because um, from a PR perspective, from a political perspective, from an international image perspective, uh, the crackdown uh, was really bad for, for the Spanish state. This has been a standoff, right, between Madrid and Barcelona. 
and both sides have tried to rally public opinion both in Spain and abroad behind them. And in that, in that um, game, in, in, in that competition, uh, the Spanish state really shot itself in the foot on Sunday. The only uh, justification, the only political motivation that I can think of for this harsh crackdown on, on the voters on Sunday um, could have been to please that part of the Spanish constituency, the conservative voting bloc that supports the ruling party in Spain, that part of that bloc that really wants to see uh, the Catalanes punished for their for daring to even suggest that they don't belong in Spain or daring to even um, threaten with the breakup of a unified Spanish nation. One of the key issues that undergird uh, the, uh, the Catalan desire for independence, and is there anything that the Spanish government could do in theory, in your view, that could uh, bridge those differences, bridge that divide? Yeah, I think that the main underlying issue has to do with the fact that an increasing number of people in Catalonia don't feel that Spain has anything to offer them. Um, what that means for different people, what that means for people is, is different according to the people. So it's in important to understand that the push for self-determination and for independence has the support in Catalonia, both of the conservative Catholic right and of some of the radical left. Um, understandably, the right has a different image of what an independent Catalonia might be able to do than the radical left has. For the left, it's an opportunity to found a progressive independent republic that will have an easier time implementing uh, more just policies, better labor conditions, um, more democracy than the Spanish state has. For the Catalan right, um, it's really, Catalan right is not anti-capitalist at all. It's, it wants to have a modern European nation and it feels probably that it can fare better economically uh, in an independent, uh, in, 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 um, when it's independent from Spain than it does now. There's also some reason to believe that the, um, what's currently the PDCAT, the, the, the right-wing conservative Catalan party, which is pushing for independence, that it might not really actually want independence, that all it's going for is a more advantageous relationship with Spain in e economic terms and that the threat with independence has all this time really been an empty threat meant to uh, force Madrid to the negotiation table. And mm -hmm. um, yesterday, the, the current president of, Catal of Catalonia, Carlos Puigdemont, uh, said as much. He said, I will not yet declare independence. I'm inviting Madrid to sit down and uh, dialogue without any preconditions. Mm -hmm. um, the... the uh, that kind of dialogue, I think, to go to the second part of your question, I think that kind of dialogue would also be really the only way to uh, diffuse the situation. I think the only way to do that would be for Madrid and Catalonia to sit down and to contemplate the possibility of a serious reform of Spain's constitution, which clearly is not working for Catalonia anymore. Um, however, the, I don't see the current Spanish government, the current Spanish leadership, Rajoy, uh, Mariano Rajoy, the current prime minister, I don't see them capable psychologically or ideologically of taking that step. And I think today's speech by the king, which fully endorsed the position that the Spanish government has taken so far, which is uh, a zero tolerance approach and um, come down with the full force of the law as harshly as possible on anybody who tries to go against what's formally in the constitution. I think, um, the speech by the king has further pushed that possibility of a negotiated solution into the farther into the distance even. Hmm. So the way you describe it, it sounds like the struggle for independence has very different meanings to the different political factions inside Catalonia. What about yeah. inside Spain on the left? Uh, Podemos arose just a few years ago against austerity, uh, challenging right-wing policies. How do they uh, feel about the uh, Catalan independence movement? Their, their, their official position uh, for a long time has been that they believe in the right, uh, that they, they support the Catalan right to self-determination. So they are in favor of an, of an actual referendum held with the approval of the government in Madrid. 
um, a binding referendum. At the same time that they've said that they hope, uh, sincerely hope, that should that referendum happen, that a majority of Catalanes will decide to remain in Spain. And they have also said that they fully understand that Catalonia doesn't want to belong to a Spain ruled by the current government, but that they uh, could become part of an alternative government, a progressive government, in which Catalonia would feel much more at home and wouldn't have the same issues that they have currently. So that's been the official line. That said, within the party, within Podemos, there is a wide range of positions and uh, the relationship between the Madrid section of Podemos and the Catalan section of Podemos, Podem, has been uh, strained and has been um, complicated and has caused splits, actually. Do you think that there is a credible case for the Spanish left to make to the Catalan left to convince them to want to stay? Um, that all depends on their actual options for government. If the Catalan left believes that Podemos has a real chance of uh, entering the government, that might be the case. On the other hand, there's real suspicion and distrust in Catalonia of any politician from Madrid, however left they might be. Hmm. So in the, final in, the, in the final minute we have, uh, the issues, the key issues that you're looking at going forward. The key issues I think are, um, is, is this, is this going to further escalate? Um, it's that, like I said, it sounded to me the king was making uh, sort of preemptive excuses for a further crackdown. Um, the Spanish constitution allows for uh, the autonomy of an autonomous region to be revoked if the autonomy causes or, or poses a serious threat to the country's interests. Uh, there's also an article in the constitution that charges the army with protecting the territorial integrity of the nation. Um, uh, so far, some people have said, before we know it, tanks will be kind of rolling down the streets of Barcelona. I've always thought that is, was a little bit exaggerated. Um, now I'm not so sure. Uh, I, I, I'm really worried that this will further escalate. And I hope that the politicians that have been calling for dialogue and for a a diffusion of detention among them, Ada Culau, the, the mayor of Barcelona. I really hope that they'll have enough sway to force uh, the different parties to the negotiation table. Sebastian Faber, professor of Hispanic studies at Oberlin College, author of the forthcoming book, Memory Battles of the Spanish Civil War. Professor Faber, thank you. Sure. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.